chamfers are easy to manipulate, because they are light in geometry. Mesh bevels however, are heavier, consisting of more geometry, and so are hard, or downright impossible to manipulate, after they've been created. That's why using mesh bevels is often called destructive modeling, in contrast to modifier-based bevels, that are live and not part of the working mesh geometry. Now, what the fuse tool allows you to do, is take a chamfer, and create a rounded bevel or fillet from it, and thereby fusing the two opposing surfaces on both sides of the chamfer into a continuous surface. To use the fuse tool, select a chamfer, which is a polygon strip consisting of all quads. The shortest possible chamfer consists of just a single polygon. Then bring up the mesh machine menu, and choose the fuse tool. You can also just press the F key, after you've opened the menu. Just as with the change width tool, if your chamfer is just a single polygon, you will have the option to reverse the direction by pressing the R key. This is required here, because the chamfer direction is shorter than the chamfer width. You can use the mouse wheel to change the fuse surface segments. If you don't use a mouse, you can use the 1 and 2 keys instead. By pressing the T key, you can toggle the tension setting, which if enabled, allows you to control the fuse surface curvature by moving the mouse up and down. Press T again to disable the setting. In addition, there are also tension presets mapped to four keys on the bottom left of the keyboard. 0.7 is the default tension and should probably be used most of the time. If the chamfer is not a closed loop, you can toggle the end caps using the F key. If you lower the dissolve angle to zero by alt scrolling, the cap edge will not be dissolved. Note how in this case, the fuse surface is no longer selected, but the caps are. That's done intentionally and is something to always look out for. The fuse tool is using its own algorithm to generate the surface. As a fallback, you can switch that method to use Blender's bridge tool instead. To switch, scroll with the mouse, while holding shift. You can see how the fuse algorithm is superior in this case, but I'll show another example, where the bridge tool is better in a second. Just be aware of this option, so you can try it, if the fuse tool does not produce the result you are looking for. This is a closed loop and so, no cap options are available. Other than that, everything is the same as before. I don't consider this a real chamfer, but in terms of topology, it's no different, and so fuse works. A word of caution however. It's not a chamfer because the surfaces on both sides are parallel. This can cause problems and you should probably avoid fusing polygons or poly strips like this if you can. Again, not a real chamfer, but a great example of where the bridge method shines and where the fuse method is likely not what you are looking for. This chamfer is not at a 45 degree angle. And this is also a bit of a peek at the true potential of turning chamfers into bevels. You can't use the bevel tool to create a surface like this. Also, something to note. With the fuse method, as long as you keep the tension below or at 1, the surface won't bulge out. Go above 1 and it will bulge out, as the tension overshoots. Experiment with partially changing the width of a chamfer, before you fuse. You can create a lot of interesting surfaces by doing so. The Fuse tool allows you to change the width across the whole selection, by pressing the W key followed by moving the mouse left and right. If this ever does not produce the result you want, you can do it in two steps instead, by running the Change Width tool first and then use the Fuse tool afterwards. I'm selectively changing the width of just this one chamfer segment. I'm then transitioning this part of the chamfer into the rest, by fusing the vertical chamfer here. Note that I'm switching between the face and the loop handle methods here, with the loop method creating the better result. Like switching between fuse and bridge, you can also switch between face and loop. The changes are more subtle and I'll cover them in detail at the end of the video. To switch, scroll with the mouse, while holding down the control key. You could actually fuse the entire chamfer now, but I think adding micro bevels to the rail edges, creates more interesting surfacing, that can't be created as easily using other workflows.
Finally, you can help the surfaces out by loop cutting the chamfer, which gets rid of those long, twisting faces. You can fuse partial chamfers as well. Depending on your dissolve angle, the caps will be selected instead of the fuse surface. As before, you can increase the angle to remove the cap edge. The angle just needs to be bigger than 90 degrees now. This is just for demonstration however, and you would probably want to keep the cap edge in a case like this. This again is not a true chamfer, both sides of the polygon strip are parallel. I've warned about this before, and here is a case where it will go wrong. At least when I'm using the face method. Switching to loop seems to work. The caps need to be dissolved, so I'm increasing the dissolve angle until the fuse surface is selected. I want to emphasize, that this kind of surface is not the true intended use of the fuse tool. A better way to approach this, is to create two chamfers and fuse each one, or just bevel both edges. Notice the slight bulging that happens here. Without any edges connected to the chamfer's sweep edges, Meshachine has to figure out the optimal direction for the fuse surface's sweeps. If you compare that to the bridge surface, it's even more pronounced there. In this example, I have additional edges as guides. I call these loop edges. As a result of these guiding loop edges, the fuse surface is properly straight. I'm also fusing these guys, to show how the sequence you do things in, can determine how much work you need to do. As you can probably guess, if you now want to straighten these out, you need to place many more loop edges to guide the fuse surface. And there you go, everything is straightened out. We've arrived at the same result, but one approach took considerably more work. This is a real chamfer of course, as I've just chamfered it. Fusing this with the face or loop handle method, makes no difference. If however, I now change the ends of the loop edges, it's basically no longer a real chamfer, because if I were to go back to a hard edge, the loop edge pairs would no longer meet at a single point on that hard edge. The result of fusing this, with the loop method, is this. The surface caves in. The face method can deal with this case much better. And that's why it's the default method of the two. I'm quickly unchamfering this. Please see the unchamfer video and documentation for details on this tool. And again, just to emphasize, if you change the loop edges before the chamfer, whatever you do, it will always result in a correct chamfer with proper loop edges. Both of these pairs of loop edges, will always meet at a single point on the original hard edge. And so, whether you choose the loop or face method, it doesn't matter. Same result. Only if you change the loop edges after the chamfer was created, will both methods behave differently. If you use the face method, and never run into overlaps like these, you can press the P key to turn on projected loops. 
this will simply ignore the loop edges, and instead create implied ones based on how each chamfer rail edge is aligned. The same is done automatically, when there are no loop edges to start with. I'm using the tape tool to roughly draw in, where the projected loop edges, or rather just vectors, will be created internally. I hope this gives you a good understanding of what the fuse tool can do, and how it works. It's not intended to replace the bevel tool, or the bridge tool. But working with simple chamfers and using the fuse tool on them, does give you a flexibility neither of these two can provide. <laughs>